To better illustrate the picture which we draw during our last session of this series of philosophy of language, one can make a comparative analysis between words considered to be synonymous in different languages. Take for example the German word klatschen, which in Russian can be translated as hlopat, which in English corresponds to clap, among other uh, English semantic meanings of this word. The coincidence of the conceptual fields, despite the relative proximity of Germanic and Slavonic languages, is however incomplete. The German analog means, in addition to the Russian hlopani, which means in English clapping, that in terms has a lot of other different semantic connotations. Also the process of chatting, uh, once again among other things, with a thing of a figurative meaning of the Russian verb to chat more or less to knock in English. That can be expressed by the German idiom einen Prozess an den Hals klatschen. But in order to narrow the selected German scope to the Russian or English, one can express the implied process by describing a specific hand movement. But then, however, the following difficulty arises. The Slavic hands denote both the Germanic Hände, which means hands, and Arme, which means arms. And in order to understand this, one will have to resort to other words, which again express different conceptual fields in the different languages, etc. etc. Another example, a statement in Russian like on prasedilchas and on sedilchas do not have separate analogues in Western European languages without such aspects, but are translated by one common statement. He sat for an hour. So it is not the case that concepts related to specific phenomena within different language systems are simply sliced differently. The concepts are just not different variants of the same semantic concept. They are really different semantic concepts with, within different language systems. And this also applies to basic logical concepts like and, a, but, etc. Uh, and we have just mentioned a few Simple examples. The total number is not just countless, but not even subject to precise definition, due to the fact that the meanings of all the concepts of the language um, depend on the meaning of the rest of the concept uh, within each specific semantic context, which does not allow the formation of a fixed group as such of concept. So what at first glance appears uh, to be an easily eliminated difference upon closer examination is an unraveled thread of the entire conceptual fabric of language. So changing one concept of a language system is like shaking a footbridge. No matter where the epicenter of the incident is, the course of everyone crossing the bridge will be corrected.